feel like paper mache is one of those art projects that we all did in elementary school, but probably none of us really remembers, unless it was past grade two. I feel like I may have done it in grade one, maybe, but I don't remember the project. I don't remember which teacher. I don't remember the end result. All I remember is the feeling of goopy fingers on newspaper. So that's it. And so, much like many of you who probably went to Disney when you were two years old, that doesn't count because you don't remember it, most likely, so you have to go as an adult. This is genuinely the first time I'm going to be experiencing paper mache from A to Z. From making the goop to making the project with the goop. Is it gonna work? That's what we're here to find out together. Okay? Okay. In order to learn what paper mache consists of, I watched a video by Alison Kolsar, so I'll link to her down below. So I am kind of taking the idea of the project she made and just making it into my own creature. I'm really curious to know, have you worked with paper mache recently? Because I really am nervous, because all I know is you need paper towels and tape and then flour and water. I'm pretty sure you don't need organic flour, but... That's all I had laying around. If you did make anything recently with paper mache, make sure you hashtag nerdy with an E, paper mache, either on Instagram or Twitter. I would, I would, I, 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 I can't speak. I would love to see your creations and, you know, get some inspiration maybe for a future time. So in Allison's video, she makes these cute, whimsical birds with super long legs. I'm like, that's, that's adorable. That's not like me. I'm not adorable. Nor do I make adorable things. So I'm going to take the same idea, but turn it into a salty. <coughs> too much salt, too much salt. <clears throat> into a salty creature. <clears throat> creature of the dark. All right, so the first thing we need to do is take paper towels and make the shape of the things that we want. So the body of the creature is supposed to be twice as big as the head. So I'm gonna take twice as much for the body. Stay here. Stay! And one for the head. Once we have that, we're supposed to take masking tape, not any other kind of tape, because for some reason this is good at absorbing moisture. I'm just following instructions. And then we're gonna be shoving it in the oven for about overnight. <laughs> but I'm gonna probably try and speed up the process by making the heat just a little higher. Should I do that? Most probably not, but I'm getting, I'm getting, wait, I'm getting too way ahead of myself. We need to calm down, take one thing at a time. So here's my mummy armature. So far, it, it's it's a mummy. It must be Egyptian. What like an Egyptian? Pretty sure that's not the tune, but let's pretend it is. Before you get offended, I'm Egyptian, and I can confirm we each live in a pyramid. All right. So the next thing that we're supposed to do is, if we want to add details, we have to use like cardboard from a cereal box, tape it on top and then add the details. So what I really want to do is I want to give it a lizard tail and some spikes. I know I'm going for a bird, but let's pretend this creature is a cockatrice. Mythological creature? I heard a story a long time ago from my uncle about it. If you don't know what a cockatrice is, there's a picture right here for your reference. Not only am I going to give it a tail, but I also want it to stand on these really long legs because the way that Allison made them were so whimsical and cute. So even though this is going to be a creature of darkness, I still want it to be whimsical and cute because there's a part of me that's not just salty, but it's sweet. Like one of those fun desserts that you all snacks. Well, English, that is so not <laughs> what I was trying to say. It's like one of those snacks that you crave. I should go back under the desk and study my languages. So as you can see, I cut little spikies from the cardboard and put them on top, starting from the head to the back. And then I attached a tail and put some more paper towels, wrap those up. While I was making the tail, I definitely changed my mind on using the cardboard because I wanted it to be a little more flowy and a lot less stiff. But the dilemma was, as I was wrapping it up, I saw that the edge was flaring and I'm like, <gasps> that is so cool. I really want the end result to have a tail that's kind of like bushy and flared. I don't know if you can do that with paper mache, but uh, I wanted to take the risk. From what I understood, the body is the main thing, so it should be in paper towel but then everything else should, in theory, be cardboard. So that didn't make it too hard to shape things. And then I added the wires. Now, I wasn't quite sure how to do the wires, but I had an idea. So I just put those thick wires. I knew they were not gonna fall off because they're not the flimsy sculpy ones. They're the, the ones that you get from the home hardware store. Taping the feet is the biggest 
pain in the butt ever. Not just because, you know, the feet were wires, but also trying to make it stand. It was like, Nick, I shall not stand. And it just kept wanting to trip over. So naturally, the first thing I had to think of is how can I make the weight in front heavier than the weight in the back? And um, yeah, I figured rocks. Don't ask why, but rocks, because it's paper. Wait. <laughs> See what I did there? Paper weight, rocks, yup. All right, here it is so far. I am really happy with the way it looks. And this is just tape. Why, why are you taking all the attention away from me? He was screaming and he just wanted to hang out. You're gonna calm down now? Calm down. I said, calm down. I know, I know, I know that my chicken is very ruffled. And before you go into the comments and say, Jackie, what's wrong with your chicken? Trust me, he is healthy. The vet said his skin is fine. It's just every January he goes through hormone kind of thing. So he over preens himself. Don't tell him but he thinks he's a pretty bird. <laughs> I really do hope that the tail does become jaggedy and really cool at the end and that it does still stand. That's going to be the one of the biggest mysteries. Worst case, I'm gonna have to put a paperweight somewhere, somehow. The next step to do, let's make the uh, flour water mixture. The recipe is, is, is supposed to be, it's supposed to be easy. It's just one cup of flour to almost one cup of water. And apparently if you live somewhere humid, you can most definitely use a little bit of salt, who would have thought, to make sure that it, you know, cuts down on the humidity. I knew salt was good on everything. Why am I waving this at you guys? Hmm? Did you do something I should know about? Hmm? This is a half cup, let's take two of these. Oh my god, water everywhere. I don't know if I'm supposed to stir this slowly, but I don't think so. Let's start with half. For those of you who are paper mache experts, before you say, The Jakey is doing it wrong. I, it's okay. This is my first time doing this. Oh my god, we need more water. So doing it wrong is part of the experience. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere. It's supposed to be mushy, but not, not pasty. Definitely not pasty. All right, let me, I need more water. Alright, so here it is. It did take almost a one-to-one -one ratio to get to this. It still has lumps, but I don't have a whisk because I don't bake. I just don't do sweet things. And it feels like the right consistency. I I wouldn't know. <laughs> this is, to me, it looks like the right consistency. And apparently it's better to use paper towels over newspaper because newspaper is too stiff, whereas paper towels will take the shape a lot better. I'm talking like I'm an ex- look at me! Talking like an expert. And yet, I know nothing. Here we go. Let's dunk the first piece into the mixture. I'm pretty sure some of you are gonna probably tell me that it's too goopy. It's quite possible that it is too- Oh my god, that is- <laughs> That- that, uh, that is- that is goopy. Uh, it still feels like the stuff in my nose for the last week because I've, I've had a cold. Alright, little buddy. Here we go. Oh, that is so cool yet so weird at the same time. I don't know if that's gonna work but it's pretty neat. I like this. It's like playing in mud. I used to play in mud a lot when I was a kid. All right, let's, let's keep doing it. So as I'm doing the paper mache part, it felt really awesome, super natural. There was something about it that was so relaxing. At the same time, I wish there were a craft kit that was paper mache, because then I could have rediscovered it as an adult instead of stumbling upon it by mistake. For some reason, the feet kept drifting apart. My guess is that the masking tape was just not strong enough to hold that kind of weight. So I decided to put a string in between, which I would eventually clip, hopefully by the end, once all of it is hardened and the integrity is safe enough. The other thing that bothered me as I was making this is that I realized the color of the flour and water was a little too close to the actual masking tape so sometimes I was like D did I cover this part I'm not I'm not quite sure so in order to remedy that I put one drop of food coloring into the actual mixture that way I know which parts were covered and which were not am I clever I think so is it a technique that other people use most probably I'm pretty sure I didn't innovate this but I'm still proud of myself nonetheless all right one of probably many other roadblocks now it's starting to get heavy and it wants to tip over and fall. Nobody discussed that in any of the other tutorials. I'm looking at you people. It's 
So I'm gonna take some foil paper and shove it under the tail in hopes that it just keeps the balance until it dries enough so it doesn't tip over and the balance balance itself out. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm really hoping it does because it's looking so cool that I don't want it to get ruined. I don't want it to go in the trash. Here it is so far. It's one of the rare times where I start a completely new material and I'm feeling so happy about it because usually I'm pretty frustrated. I am still frustrated that it keeps wanting to tip over, but I'm still a beginner. And it's probably more engineering than crafting. I have to learn how to balance things. Life philosophy. So what I'm gonna do now is preheat the oven at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, put it in there on a foil paper, and then close the oven. Apparently that's how it's supposed to be able to dry up better overnight, and it's 10 p.m. so you're gonna see me the next day. All right, let's, let's pray to the drying gods. Dear drying gods of evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, falls, and fallen limbs. And also, make sure you're drying my stuff. So here we are the next day. I had to pull the wax paper out of its feet because it kind of just, it got stuck. It was like, I want to stay too. I want to be part of this. And I was like, you get out. And it does look kind of cool. My biggest worry is it standing on its own. All I did was lift it like, like a real chicken from under like here, like this. And then I placed this right on top because I'm not sure if it's going to stand on its own, but I want to see that with you. I have a feeling it's going to tip over. This string used to be very stiff, but now it's kind of loose. So my guess is that I probably moved it as I was putting it onto the tray, which means that the position of the leg is too narrow. That's my guess. So let's let's do the reveal. Where, where do I start? You know what? Get, get it, get out, get. And oh my gosh, it's all it's already wobbly. Already, yeah. Yup, yup, yup. Come on, chicken, please. Nope. Yup. Nope. Nope. Just nope. That sucks. <laughs> I really would have loved for it to stand. Don't don't break though. Don't break. Okay. Battle scars from the wax paper. After much thought, the only way I can think of actually having this thing stand up is to actually glue it. Actually, 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 actually. is to glue it on a wooden stand. So it just really good glue gun, glue it on top, and it's gonna stand. And then I'm gonna snip the bottom parts of the string. And now you know what we gotta do. Time for fun time montage. That's not what I meant though. I guess fun time montage it is. <laughs> So in all seriousness, putting fun time montage aside, I used my glue gun, put it on a board, and now what we're supposed to do is just paint it with acrylic paint. Is it going to be absorbent? Probably not. And one of the things I did notice is if you do use paper towels, you're going to get a lot of texture because, you know, Ridge's absorbency power. Whereas if you decided to use newspaper or any kind of other ads, it would be a smoother surface. to admit painting on that fleshy tone of that chicken was kind of gross because it made me think of raw chicken and why am I touching raw chicken especially with the texture I mean look at the texture it's bumpy it looks like raw chicken yeah one of the challenges that I found when painting this is that because everything is so bumpy and lumpy it was really hard to get straight lines, so if I did it with a brush, because of the bumps, it looks not straight. And if I used a pointy or dotted tool, same thing again, stiff, stiff tool on a bumpy road is not a good idea. is absolutely adorable. I may or may not have been slightly inspired by the cornflakes chicken. I was about to say duck. It's 
not a duck. The only thing technically left to do is put a water-based coat on it to seal the deal. So as I'm talking right now, you're going to see the before and after of putting the glaze. So I'll put the glaze after the video and just, I'll just put it together so you grains can see it. I have to admit, I am extremely surprised and in a good way of how much I genuinely- Wait! I want to interrupt myself. I really wish that they showed me these things in elementary school because I most likely would have loved to develop a skill like this. But I really don't remember doing paper mache at all, which means that the projects were probably nothing special. So if you work in elementary school, dream big. Teach them to attain things like monsters. Because if they like monsters, they can make monsters. I thought this stuff was only good to make balloons covered and kind of like pinata things. I didn't think that making a sturdy, I believe it or not, it's, it's pretty sturdy, sculpture with things that most of us who've at least crafted once in our lives have laying around the house. At no moment am I holding it and thinking this is fragile at all, which, which is kind of scary to think we put that flower in our stomach. Let me know what you grains think. Have you done any paper mache? And if you have, remember, I want to see what you've made. I'm really, really interested in the kind of things that we can do with this. And if it's something you like and you want to see me do something a little more complex, like an actual environment, you know what? If we reach 20,000 likes, which is a very high number, if we reach that number, I'll make something with paper mache in an actual environment. Why am I doing this to myself? Why, why am I setting myself up for failure? Uh... Thank you so much for watching my little grains. Don't worry, Salty Crafter will be back on Friday and then afterwards, I, I, probably on Wednesday again. But there's a good chance I might change my schedules to Tuesday, Thursdays instead of Wednesday, Fridays, but stay, stay tuned for that. I'm still deciding. I can't decide. Let me know also what you think. Vote. Is Tuesday, Thursday okay for you? I'll decide from there. If you want to watch a crafty video, make sure you check it up here. And if you want to watch a salty video because you need to live on the salt, by the way, don't think I haven't seen all of you, not all of you, but many of you tag me on that little meme. Sugar is just angry, no, what was it? Salt is just angry sugar. I see you and I appreciate it. It gives me chuckles every time. It hasn't gotten old for me yet. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video. <laughs>